is located in New York, DC Comics is in LA, but it seems like almost everybody else is now located in Portland. Hmm. And it's kind of a pretty cool thing going on right now. And yeah, we've got Dark Horse Comics, Oni Comics, uh, top shelf sort of the image. Image Comics. Yeah, Image just moved up there. Um, Fan Graphics is in Seattle. Seattle. Uh huh. Heavy Metal Magazine. Right. Uh, see, um, we're leaving. Oh, IDW opened up an office. Dirk really? Wood, office. Dirk Wood is now based oh, in. Oh really? Uh, so there's a lot of uh, culture going on. So they're not just drawing birds on it. You know, it's the right. Portland thing <laughs> That's uh, right. really moving along. It's kind it of is. A, well, the entire city is exploding. I mean, there's right. neighborhoods that are being torn down and rebuilt, and it's a lot of changes going on. A lot of yeah. changes. Mm-hmm. Plus, there's a huge web comics community in mm-hmm. Portland as well. Like, a lot of the younger kids are doing comics that just appear on the internet for free. And there's like a ton of the people in that community, like in Portland. It's nice to have that network of like other web comic artists. Because I know sometimes, like, when your stuff's only on the web and you don't always get to see your audience, and you may work by yourself at home, like, you get kind of lonely and you're feeling isolated and you're not sure if anyone like really cares about your stuff or if you even care about your stuff. So it's nice to meet other webcomic artists that feel the same way and get together for coffee and like have group work hangs and stuff. And webcomics is interesting to bring, bring that up because a lot of people will ask, well, how do I break into comics? How do I start with my kind of career? Mm-hmm. And because of the web, all bets are off. There used to be, back in the day when there, we didn't have the web, you would have to jump through all these hoops. You'd have to put things in these middle envelopes and send them to specific editors, and it was very, very involved. But now, you just put stuff online, and then you send a link to whoever you want to, it to be seen by, whether it be a professional, an editor, a guy who could give you a job, or just fellow fans, you know, try and get a fan base going. So, so anybody who has aspirations about drawing comics, there's nothing preventing you from doing your little comic, getting some kind of um, web page, or even if you can't afford like a web page or like a WordPress kind of thing, like just having uh, set, up, set up an album in your Facebook and uh, use Facebook album as, as your way of posting some stuff. Or get a Tumblr. Or Tumblr, there you go, even better. And, and if your stuff is interesting, you, you will get an audience. You know, if it's, if it's uh, and, and so that would be, like if anybody has a question about that, I say, just go ahead and just start doing it and mm. see what happens. And one of the things I've always liked about the comic book industry, starting back in my day, uh, was the fact there was an intimacy between the creators and the fan base, which I don't think exists in other mediums as much. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're a fan of Hollywood movies and stuff like that, it's huge. Whereas the first comic convention I went to, I was really fond of this one artist, and I was talking to the comic book store person there, and he says, well, he's sitting right over there. Right. <laughs> and so I went and talked to Chris Warner, who became the editor-in-chief at Dark Horse Comics. That's right. And so... Now with Facebook and Twitter and all those things, it's much easier to talk to comic book creators and to find out, and especially with them being local, that leads to a better synergy between the fan base and the creators, I feel. So, Absolutely. And I, does that guy, does, I assume that's a big chunk of, because one of the things I always find about comic books is you're hand selling your products, so I assume you guys are hand selling your products very heavily, I and mean, that's part of what you guys are here today to do, sure. is to create a fan base. Sure. And I assume all of you have Twitter, Facebook. Absolutely, we do. Yeah, <laughs> so. one too, some of us won too many accounts. <laughs> but that's, and you know, there's, there's always debate about like how effective this or that platform is or this uh, that approach to social media. I mean, that's an ongoing thing. You have to sort of figure that out kind of for yourself, you know, what yeah. works best for you and for what you're trying to get across. There's no real you know, rules there either. That's, that's, the, that's the beauty and the, the sort of disadvantage about the web is, is that yeah, everything goes. You want. Yeah. Literally anything you want. Yeah. No one will stop you. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? They shoot in since it's pretty informal. Hmm? Hmm? Any? Hmm? Sure. I grew up in Japan where, you know, they have uh, the manga and, you know, people of all ages on trains reading the uh, comics back in the 60s and 70s. And just can you tell me about, you know, what the current like demographic is for demand for comics? I mean, I don't read them personally myself now, but is it most are they mainly done for kids or young adults or adults or? You know, it's it's hard to keep track because as because of the whole web thing, there's just everything and everything now. I mean, it's 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 it really depends. I mean, the. You have to focus the question a little bit because it's a. Uh, I I do think like in terms of um, the the larger publishers I've worked with, and not not Marvel and DC, but um, more like traditional book publishers like HarperCollins and Penguin and stuff like that. 
I do feel like they are trying to get into comics but a lot in the kids format because mm-hmm. um, so like because they know that that can get distribution to like um, regular bookstores and stuff like that where it, and you know Marvel and DC are also trying to get into kids stuff as well but um, but I think they're you know they still have like a very teenagey or um, college-y um, base but I definitely have noticed like the larger publishers coming out with uh, the, the traditional book publishers right. coming out with a lot more um, kids comic books right the, the book publishers seem to be taking advantage of this of the niches in the market that are not being serviced by the traditional publishers because Marvel and DC are pretty much superhero dominated I mean they do have these imprints and they will put out a few things that aren't superheroes so that means that book publishers and independent publishers uh, will pick up the slack for an audience that wants, let's say, for instance, historical comics or children's comics or whatever. You know, like you know, like the biography of Kafka in comic book form. You know, like like mm. there's this, you know, it can go very highbrow and 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 uh, and and for kids and and the sort of the in between the book publishers. I don't notice a lot of like sort of in between stuff for teens and stuff like that because that's kind of covered in other places mm. and and so the book publishers tend to also they also have this attitude of that they're a little bit better than comic book publishers so the stuff that they put out is like you know it's hardbound it's usually has a more of a pedigree involved in the subject matter of the creators um, but uh, as a retailer I'll tell you when I opened up in 87 uh, the tagline for the industry was comics weren't just for kids and they were really had a chip on their shoulder now the tagline is comics are fun for all ages. <laughs> and that's because other industries let their youth fall away, things like baseball cards and stuff like that, hmm. whereas comics realized youth is the future customer base. And you can see it very much with the content that's being published is they are targeting every single age group that's out there. These people's work is very diverse. Right. Mm, yeah, like my book is definitely like an all ages book. Um, Paul, yours probably appeals more to like an adult sensibility, but also like would be fun for kids that wanted something that challenged them. Right. Like, right. Exactly. Like I was just telling a story about how one of my uh, historical uh, uh, adventure books is really for like maybe junior high and up, you know, adults, some peers. I wrote it for my peers, for me and my friends. But a guy bought it for his eight-year-old kid and left it in his room. And hours later, checked in on him and saw that he was completely immersed in this book in which the text is way above his reading comprehension. But there were still all these really cool images and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, it, 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 I, I just try and make sure that all my stuff is, is, is uh, accessible to everybody, even if it's not written for everybody. I think that that's kind of important. But I, I'm really happy about how the pendulum is shifting back towards the all ages thing because for there was a period there, especially in the '90s uh, and uh, and the knots, where it really got pretty yeah. dark, and and, <laughs> and and unfortunately, the for the DC the Marvel movies and everything have got it right in terms of you know the balance of drama and comedy and whimsy and serious and but unfortunately the the last few DC movies were based on comic books that were made in the 90s during this super dark phase. So that's why you have like a Superman movie where he's kind of doing things that Superman shouldn't be doing. He's like really kind of dark and will be and, and, and it's like, well, I'm really glad that there's other things like for instance on uh, Cartoon Network, there's this fantastic new series, Justice League, um, I forget the last name, Justice League Action, I think it's called. Uh, brand new CNW, and and they those shows get it right. Those shows get that that superhero thing right, where it's drama and there's some tension, there's some excitement, but it's not mean, right? You know, to give us a kind of a lighthearted connection to Roseburg, Douglas County. I Zombie is co-created by Mike Allred, and Mike Allred is from Roseburg, mm-hmm. and I Zombie is a lovely mix mm-hmm. of uh, whimsy with some more dramatic elements. So. Right, and of course, it started out as a comic book and then went on to. Other things, and because because of Mike Allred's drawing style, it doesn't ever get particularly disturbing or upsetting. Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of a whimsical look at zombies, mm. as opposed to something like The Walking Dead, which is just let's just try and freak people out as much as possible. 